You're on Rescue TV with the Divine Crystal Barter from Pink Hope Foundation. Welcome, congratulations. Thanks, Baha. I'm stoked to be on here. So. You've got a big year ahead. Huge, huge start to the year. Um, I guess you know, obviously, Angelina Jolie shared with the world that she had carried the BRCA1 gene, the same gene that's in my family, and decided to have a preventative double mastectomy. So it's been flat out since that revelation. And do you think that the um, spotlight of a celebrity um, suffering from uh, uh, otherwise undiscussed uh, disease or strain of breast cancer uh, has been the, you know, the catalyst for people wanting to find out more about their own genetic predisposition? Absolutely, because I think at the end of the day, this is a gift of knowledge, something that future generations never had. And with this knowledge, you can make life-saving decisions. And not just the surgery that Angelina decided to have, but you can share this knowledge with your children. Tell us a little your bit about your story, family. because you know I know your mum, and I know you're a mother of two. And three. You're a mother of three? Yeah, oh my Lord. she's three now, so it's not as if I had it yesterday. Wow. Three. Wow. I know. So tell us your story, because I think that you know, when Australians kind of hear what happened to you and the decisions that you've made, uh, it's very inspirational. So I come from a family, um, four generations that we know of straight of women affected by breast and ovarian cancer. So my great grandma was 68 when she died, my nan was diagnosed at 44 and my mum was just 36. Um, I grew up from a very young age where cancer was all that I knew. I didn't know anything different. Women in my family either had you know, no hair or no breasts. And it was pretty confronting for a long time. I didn't see, I saw it as wholly negative. It, it was as not, you would. yeah. And it took me a long time to be able to go, wow, I'm fortunate that I've been born into the age of genetics. And they actually, my mum and my nan were some of the first people tested for the BRCA gene fault. I was about 17, 18 when my mum and nan tested positive. They tested positive, yeah, for right. the BRCA1 gene and it came back and I just wasn't ready at that point in my life. Boys, dancing, Boots. social life, that was, <laughs> that was more important to me. It wasn't until I had my first baby, Riley, when I was 21, nearly 22, that I held him in my arms and I just thought, you know, my number one concern is being healthy for him and being the best mum that I can. And I, so what did you do? I had the gene test and I went in and had a blood test and it came back that it was positive. So, so if our readers have got um, a family history of breast mm. cancer, what can they do? I think that's a really good point to bring up because they say it's about 5 to 10% of all breast cancer cases that carry a gene fault or a genetic predisposition. Yeah. This is going to change. I believe in a few years we'll know much more about hereditary cancer and genetics yeah. and this will fluctuate. Um, I don't want everyone out there who has had one, cancer, one case of cancer in their family freaking out and being stressed. It's about being proactive and vigilant. The one thing, and with Bright Pink Lipstick Day coming up on the 20th of September with, with Revlon, Revlon. Yeah, you've partnered um, with them. They've been very generous in bringing awareness absolutely. to it. Um, absolutely. The most important thing that I want to come from Pink Hope and from my association with Bright Pink Lipstick Day and Revlon is for people to investigate their family health history. I think that that was the message that I got when I first met you a year mm. ago. Um, I, on, I have a daughter, a young daughter, and her grandmother um, had a double mastectomy a few years ago. And for me, it was really interesting, um, your story, because I thought, wow, what if I would be able to test my daughter mm. um, so that she would have some certainty rather than fear because in her father's side of the family she has a number of mm. cases of breast cancer. And I thought it would never have occurred to me to not live in fear but to live in knowledge. And mm. I love that Pink Hope is a charity that's not about fear mongering. It's about hope. Mm. It's about, about knowledge. Being, and, and the thing that... I felt when I was laying in my hospital bed and I had the drains hanging out and I'd just lost my breasts at 25 years of age, which was very confronting, but I thought, you know what, if something positive can come from my story, can come from my family struggles, and that then became Pink Hope. And I live and breathe it every day and it's about giving women and families options, giving so them knowledge. So tell me about what you do at Pink Hope because you're not raising money for research. Mm. You're, you're 
a support Focus, group. Yeah. So we originally started as that community-based support group, we've, but we've grown so much more than that. Um, there's not many charities in Australia that are very prevention driven. Yeah. Like we, our focus, even though we support and inspire women that are diagnosed with cancer, we're really at that beginning stage where people get the knowledge, get the support, get the education and the awareness to implement life-saving breast and ovarian health strategies, to investigate their family history and feel confident with the options and decisions that they're facing. And that's the most important thing. If we can save money and lives, that's a pretty amazing thing that we're able to do and prevention is the way of the future. So we're going to invite our readers um, to check out your website and to see, um, to find out more information if they are um, concerned about breast cancer mm. or cancer in, in their mm. family lineage, but also if they want to be part of Pink um, Lipstick Day, yeah, Pink so Lipstick Day, what can so they do? Ex uh, it's so exciting. So you'll be seeing posters in stores and... Um, and it happens every year. And at Emma Stone, Revlon Ambassador Emma Stone is the face on all the posters and the flyers and I adore her. And, and you're rocking pink lipstick beautifully and pink it's, it becomes you. It's, it's my colour and I think you know every woman loves pink and bright pink lipstick day is just a show of that positivity that women and families and even some brave men like Carl Stefanovic did it last year are uniting and raising the profile of hereditary breast and ovarian cancer and now because this campaign's the only global campaign of its kind in the world that supports women like Angelina Jolie I think this is going to be a cracker of a year. So have you you know had your people contact her people and you, oh. are, you are you working? Are if you working it was that you? easy I'd be in Hollywood somewhere yeah, but um, well, you know, if, if she's watching Rescue TV, you never know. Um, you, never know. Um, you know, Get if I could say anything to her, it would be thank you. She's given the greatest gift to our cause and our charity indirectly. But what would make my day, make my year, is seeing her in some bright pink Revlon lippy. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Crystal. Thank you for um, all the information and support you provide and um, you really are an inspiration. It's a pleasure to and see you. And you too. You're yeah. amazing and thanks to all your readers for the support.